Hello, Ten Anderson. Lovely to be in touch with you again, even if it's not face to face. First question, five logos on this screen. There is a link between them all. Can you work out what it is? You have got 30 seconds. Pause the video while you do it. No cheating now. There we go. Heading on the next slide will show you. It's all about competition. We have got a do now, just like we normally would have. You can use your knowledge organisers. If you didn't bring them home from school, I have already emailed a copy to you. And you might also need a periodic table for the second question here. If that's the case, there is a periodic table on the next slide. So you can go forward, have a little look, go backwards. You know how these things work, probably better than I do. Remember, do now only takes five minutes. If you finish in less time than that, then move forward onto the answers. And here are the answers. Anderson, Ten Anderson, um, all in red, quite straightforward. Anything you don't know, you need to make sure you learn. We will be having these all the time and when we have our online lessons, so make sure you keep doing them. We've got four objectives today, all about animals and competition. Why do, they, why do they compete? What is it they compete for? How do they adapt so that they can actually make the best at what's available to them? And what makes them successful? Now, I've put a link in here for a short video from YouTube about animals competing. You'll need to watch it at least twice. First time through, I would say, watch the video, think about what it says. If you've got a question, make a note. Second time, listen to it again, answer the questions that you found, check you've understood it. If you have a problem getting the link to run from this video, um, copy it, paste it to your browser, try it again. If you still can't get it to run, email me and I'll send you a hard copy via email. So, first type of competition, you should have got this from the video, is to do with food. You've got four key bits of information here. The red words are the scientific vocabulary, the key words you need to be able to use. You need to know what they mean. You need to be able to spell them. Make sure that Herbie and Carney have an I, not an E. Really important. Changes to an ecosystem you should be good on because we all had the lesson where we thought about what would happen to rabbits living in an area under various different circumstances. So we've already covered that. That's revision. Territory, that is the amount of space in which an area lives. Um, and most animals are like us. They either live in families or in groups of families called a pack. They will have to have a territory that gives them space to live in, space to hunt in, space to nest in. Lots of animals will have territories that they will defend quite strongly. If you look outside of your window, you might see a cute little robin thinking, ah, oh, lovely. In actual fact, they are fiercely territorial birds. They will fight off any other robins that try to go in their area because they know once they've got chicks that have hatched out of their nests, they're going to need lots of food. And if they don't have the right size or type of territory, they're not going to be able to feed those chicks. And it's all about getting the babies to get, grow up to carry on the species. Competition for a mate? Well, I don't need to say a lot about this. I'm sure you understand this pretty well already. The only thing you need to remember is that some species, the males will fight between themselves. The dominant male, the strongest one, the winner, will actually then become the one that mates with the females in the pack. If there are other males that he has defeated, they will have to go elsewhere and try and fight another male to get a new pack. Young males will be tolerated until they reach the point where they will challenge the adult. If you've seen The Lion King, you will know that Simba's father had a problem with his brother, who was Simba's uncle, and actually the uncle ended up on the edge of the pack without a mate. Not just Disney Plus, real life. Now, how you measure success? 
There's some information here. You can write out what I've written. Put it in your own words if you like. If you can put it into your own words and have it still make sense, the time and thinking that that involves will help you remember it and help you to understand it. So it's a good one to do. Even if you can only do one of the three, that's the start. Weird word alert. Love a weird word. An extremophile. Notice you lose the E off from the end of extreme when you add the O file on the end. File means the liker of. Extreme means it likes. It's an organism that likes living in an extreme environment. Examples would be the sulfuric vents underneath the sea. Not very visible, but they are actually volcanoes under the sea. They heat up the water around them. They produce noxious gases. Noxious, of course, means poisonous. And some animals are not only adapted to survive, but they actually thrive. That means they do really, really well. They have adapted to that niche and it is their favourite place to be. Some of them, it's their only place to be. Your task this week is going to find at least four extremophiles and make notes about them. If you look on the next page, before you go to these websites, you can see how you're going to present it. You might want to bear that in mind to make sure you get enough information. I provided you with two websites to get started. The bottom one is BBC Bite Size, so that will give you an idea of the level of information that you need for GCSE. The one above is National Geographic, which actually provides some information about some really weird and wonderful extreme O files. When you've got your information, you are going to make at least four top trump style cards. You may cut and paste an image of your organism. That isn't the main part of the work though, pretty though it is. The main part is to decide on your categories and to collect the information on them. You are going to decide, for some of them, how to rank them. You're going to have to be able to explain or justify your choice. How do you decide that something gets a 10 out of 10? I would suggest you use numbers up to 10 if possible, rather than huge numbers, because it makes it a lot easier to compare them without making mistakes. We will be sharing our findings. I would like you to email this work through to me. And you could also, of course, phone a friend to compare which animals you chose, which scores you gave them. Please just don't visit each other. So you have now got your objectives here to review. How did you do? Could you explain these? Could you answer them? If you're not 100% sure, you've got plenty of time to go back and make sure you are. If you can't do it from what I've given you, you can, of course, email me because I'm always happy to help. Before you go, you have got one more slide. And this is our fun finisher because it's important we have some fun at the moment. Here we go, guys. Some of you may have missed our song time which would be a shame. So here is the song for this week. You've sung it before. It's got the words. I'm sure we'll all remember singing it together. And as well as having words, it will actually help us learn some of our science. Get our vocabulary. Keep yourselves safe. Have fun. See you soon.